um when it comes to the body the body is quite tangible i can see it um and i look at the mirror i can see the body uh but um when it comes to the self i can't see it so do i have to just assume that there is a self <clears throat> see, this is interesting you know uh, <clears throat> we say that body is tangible and self is not but let me ask this question body is tangible to whom to self or to body <laughs> So this is a very interesting thing, you know. Who is able to say that, you know, see and say this, that body is tangible? Is it the self or is it the body? I am able to see that my body is tangible. Yes. So this I is important. And now, you, if you ask yourself, how do you see the body? the answer would be that i can see the form of the body you know it is physically there and i can see the form yes right. now close your eyes and see if you can still feel that the body is there if you close I your eyes i know that i know that the body is there even when my eyes are closed uh, can you feel that bo- that the body is there i mean i can don't see it but i know it's there no <laughs> do you feel that the body is there or now there is no feel of the body and because of your past knowledge you are saying that the body is there no i can't feel it yes so this is important and how do you feel it by observing some sensation from the body mm. so now you have to ask this question who is observing this sensation Mm. so the one who is observing this sensation is the self so self is feeling this sensation and deciding that the body is there similarly it is the self who is observing or seeing the form of the body and deciding that the body is there So now you have to ask this question who is more authentic the self or the body <laughs> is self authenticating the body and authenticating that the body is there or is it the body you know authenticating the self that is there so if you see this way you would realize that yes certainly self is more authentic and it is authenticating that the body is there yes i mean don't kind of accept it immediately observe this observe that when you close your eyes you can still feel some sensation from the body and therefore you feel that yes the body is there so there is some pain in the body and you can you know feel that yes the body is there or there is some you know pain or some cold some heat in the body some itching in the body and that is how you decide that yes body is there and interestingly you will also see that you know it is for you to decide to read that sensation or not to read that sensation and there will be many occasions when you are so absorbed in yourself you are thinking about something imagining something that you don't even pay attention to the sensation of the body and when you are not paying attention to the sensation of the body you don't read the sensation right and at that moment it is immaterial whether the body is there or not there so all these things we will see we will see that the self is not even reading the sensation all the time from the body 
And when the self is not reading the sensation, it is immaterial whether the body is there or not there. A lot of times the two seem to be as one. Um, to be able to see them separately uh, is difficult. Yeah, it is difficult because that is how we are conditioned. So this is why we discuss so many things, you know, about this activity of the self, the need of the self, the activity of the self, and then finally the response of the self and the body. So when we do this investigation, we will be able to see that, yes, they are quite different. And we have been going by this assumption that they are the same. And this is the reason why we are not able to solve or even articulate many of the problems which relates to human being. For example, this medicine, you know, health. We have been trying to treat the disease by treating the body. And now we are saying, you know, a large number of diseases are psychosomatic. Right? You. What is the meaning of the psychosomatic? If it is just the body, then the body you know, has to be treated. Where is this psycho and how does it work? That question is not clear and therefore we are not able to handle most of the psychosomatic diseases. Because this psycho is not clear and therefore we don't know how to take care of this psycho. We are only trying to take care of the body and then with taking care of the body, we are not able to handle the disease which is related to this psycho. So most of these psychosomatic diseases, what you we are trying to do is to make them dull, you know, rather than treat them. So if they are violent, it is self who is responsible for violence and you don't know the self and you don't know how to handle the self. So you give some medicine which you know, make them dull. So they cannot be violent now because the activity level of the body has gone down. Inside they are still very violent. So let's look at this. Let us study. I mean, we are just saying that take this as a proposal and start in studying yourself. Study your body. Study the interaction that is taking place between you and the body. All this has to be, you know, investigated. And when we investigate, we can see this, you know, that the self is there, the body is there, two distinct realities. There is interaction between the two. There is a coexistence between the self and the body. And there is an interaction. And there is these interactions I can study. You know, the self is giving some instruction to the body and the body is doing accordingly. Self is also reading some sensation from the body and on the basis of that sensation it decides what to be done with the body. So when there is a need for the food in the body, you know, the self gets this sensation of hunger and on the basis of that it decides that some food has to be given to the body. But if self has decided to be on fast, it will give the instruction back to the body that, you know, today is the fast and there is no food today. So all this is happening, which we can study. But I would, all I would suggest is that, you know, let us explore, let us investigate, you know, and see whether what is being proposed is making sense for us as human beings. You spoke of medicine, but um, through medicine, through science, neuroscience, so much progress has been made, but uh, how come there is no talk of this self? See, <clears throat> what we are trying to say is that Every one of us can authenticate for himself that self is there. This is what I was saying just now. <clears throat> In fact, 
one can authenticate that he is the self in coexistence with the body and not just the body so i can by investigation i can see that i am there as the self and i am in coexistence with this body which i am using as an instrument right and i am not just the body so this can be investigated right understood and what i would say is that if science includes this study of the self right then it will be able to handle human being much better it will be able to understand human being much better much better than what it is able to understand today and if we talk about this medicine or biology or neuroscience with this notion of this self and this understanding of this self you know, they can do much better we can do much better but it is just a proposal i would say you know, we have to work on it work on it and see and you being a doctor i think you know you can do this investigation much better <laughs> i mean from whatever medical education we have done there is no talk of self and uh, so i mean when we talk of the self uh, where exactly is it since i can't really see it is it inside the body or is there some a uh, barrier between the self and the body or where is it how are they two connected together see <clears throat> i mean our insistence uh, is always that you know we should be able to see the form okay. so this is one of the preconditioning which is there that if something to be real i must be able to see the form right which is in a way okay you know but in order to see the form of the self we need to do much more you know self investigation self exploration but what we can immediately do is you know try to see this in terms of activities in terms of the activities of the self and the activities of the body right activity of the self and activity of the body so we can do that we can see that the activity of the self is going on activity of the body is going on and these two activities are of two different types you know and i can pinpoint for example i can pinpoint that i had at expectation you know to eat some particular you know sweet with particular taste right. now this expectation in me is there and then i instruct the body to walk to the sweet shop take out the money pay the money take this sweet put it in the mouth all this i can see and in the meantime i remember happen to remember something else i start you know working in that you know and my imagination is now involved with that and i don't even pay attention to the test for which i came all the way bought this with paid money and all that i did but in the meantime i am engaged in some other imagination so i am not even taking note of the test so all this is happening so here right we can start with you know studying the activity of the personal activity of the body to be able to see the form of the self we would need much more you know work much more you know kind of self investigation 
where we have developed the certainty to see the self more subtle than the body. The body is cross, so you can see the form of the body with your state of the you know, observation. But self is subtler than the body, and therefore we have to develop that subtlety, you know, to see the self in the form in terms of form. But in terms of activities, certainly we can see even with now whatever capacity we have to see. Yeah, but we will, you know, this is a question which we will keep, you know, discussing as we go along, because a lot of, you know kind of uh, experimentation has to be done and we have to develop this capacity to see subtler things than what we are using now. So this we will take up as we go along. This will an open question for us. So yeah, when you put it like this, then um, so digesting food is going on in the body. Activities within me, I am thinking, I am imagining. Yeah. Yeah, and interestingly, you can put this all three categories. You know, what is happening in the self purely, what is happening in the body purely, and what is happening. You know, in coordination with the self and body. For example, thinking. Thinking is purely the activity of the self. Walking. Walking is an activity which is done at the level of body, but it is done with the instruction of the self. So it involves this body in the self. But digesting food, for example, this digesting is taking place in the body. And this need not be involved in it. But when it comes to walking, the self has to be. Involved. If the self is not giving instruction, the body cannot walk. So, like that, you know. Slowly, we can see these activities as, as different activities, you know? activity of the self, activity of the body, and activity of the self and body working together. You said that the self um, is directing the body. So, how does it direct the body? Um, See, to all these questions, there are different aspects. When you respond to this kind of question, there are different aspects. For example, one question would be that what is the transaction between the self and the body? Yes. The other question would be that what is the basis of this transaction? Now, these are two different questions. So, if you ask this first question, I will respond to it and you can verify. If you ask the second question, then I would say that you have to wait, you know, and develop your capacity further to be able to see what I would give as a response. The issue is not only that I give some response to it. For us, the important issue is that whatever response is given, you should be able to explore and verify for yourself. Then it makes sense. Right? Otherwise, you know, it will be more like an information for you and, you know, and if you are not able to verify and understand, it might even become a burden for you. Right? So, I will respond, like, if you ask me how this, you know, this, what kind of transaction is taking place between the self and the body, right? I can give this description that 
this transaction between the self and body is in the form of information that is self is giving some instruction to the body which is an information the self is also reading some sensation from the body which is also an information and this is how the transaction is taking place so this is the transaction taking place between the self and the body self is giving some instruction to the body like walk you know i gave this example the self wants to you know eat that sweet or get the taste of that sweet which it happen to like so it will instruct the body to walk to the sweet shop and the body will walk right instruct the body to take out money and pay right so it will take out the money and pay and last to pick this sweet and put it in the mouth and the body will keep doing whatever the self is instructing and then when this sweet comes in the contact with the tongue right the self will read that sensation and if it happens to match with the expected sensation it will feel happy if it does not match with the expected sensation right the desirable sensation then it will feel unhappy now it was initiated by the self and it has been you know enjoyed or you know suffered by the self and in this whole process the body has been used as an instrument right the self has been giving instruction to the body and self has been reading sensation from the body so this is the transaction right so this is something which i can answer presently and which you can verify with your state of you know the uh, observation or capacity to explore and investigate and observe you know that subtlety level that you we have <coughs> so this i can certainly respond and you can verify but if you ask me what is the basis of this transaction right then i will be you know saying that this transaction is taking place between the self and body you know in space so through space this instruction you know is transmitted from the self to the body and from the body to the self but then this is something which we have to keep open for further you know future verification when we develop that subtlety but this transaction that is taking place can be explained you know and each one of us can verify it so i mean many of these questions cannot be answered in that sense you know which can be verified with our state of you know being or our state of or our capacity of uh, seeing the subtlety of things but certain questions yes can be answered you know in terms of you know what can be verified by each one of us with our state of you know uh, capacity to observe so slowly we have to observe you know develop that capacity to observe so that we can see and verify for ourselves but this will keep open you know as we go along we'll you know talk about all these issues you know this is are the issues in fact which we are going to talk about all through the course <laughs> so these questions will also keep coming and we will you know respond uh uh depending upon you know what is our state and how subtle we have become in terms of our observation yes so this is what i have to say at this point of time so um when it comes to the activities of the self and the body you said that uh, the activities in the self like thinking are going on continuously 
but i don't think all the time like when i go to sleep i'm not thinking so shouldn't the activity of the self also be temporary some of the activities yeah could be you know but then let us observe and see for example do you dream while sleeping sometimes yes so does dream include thinking well i can't say that it's thinking <laughs> i don't know yeah so this we have to see in fact if you start observing yourself in the day time right you will see that you are day dreaming you know <laughs> so most of these imaginations which keep going on when you are awake right this is what you call as thinking but lot of imaginations are going on when you are awake you know and they are going on continuously so let us start observing these imaginations which are going on and thinking is a part of it if we can be aware of this in the day time when we are awake then we can slowly you know try becoming aware of these imaginations when we are asleep and when we can do that we will see that this imaginations are going on whether we are awake or whether we are sleeping only thing is that we are not aware of it we are not aware of it even when we are awake so we are not aware of them while sleeping so let us start with being aware when we are awake so many thoughts are going on you know so many imaginations are going on one after the other but we are not aware of it we are not observing it so now let us try to be aware let us try to you know observe it in fact i keep quoting this you know there used to be a serial called mungeri lal ke hasin sapne you know and this is an half an hour serial so first one minute this mungeri lal is you know aware that he is a pun and he is sitting outside the office right and then he takes off you know so whole series of imagination goes on for 28 minutes and finally last one minute he realized that he is sitting outside the office you know so this 28 minutes he is not aware but this imagination is going on but if we start observing ourselves we'll see this is what is happening with each one of us that we are no less than mungeri lal you know. <laughs> but we are not aware so what we are saying is that let's be aware of it aware of the imagination when we are awake then slowly we'll develop the capacity to be aware of it the imagination when we are asleep and we will see that this imagination is going on whether we are awake or whether we are sleeping right in fact you would know that you know a large number of inventions you know where people the scientists who were working on it were quite puzzled and they didn't know what to do right and then they slept with the problem and they got the answer you know while sleeping No. there have been scientists who were so preoccupied with the problem and they felt that you know there is no possible solution they can come up with and one fine morning you know he gets up or she gets up and see that the answers are written there and then she is surprised as to what happened and then she recognizes that it is her own handwriting <laughs> and then she slowly recalls that yes she got this answer while she was you know sleeping and then she got up and picked up the copy and the pen and she wrote it down so all this is happening but we are not aware so here you mean that even when we are sleep walking and all some thinking is going on 
Of course, how can you sleep walk otherwise? <laughs> I was just saying that this walking is an activity which needs the involvement of the body and the self both. So if you are sleep walking, certainly your self is involved. Even sometimes um, I lie down in one position, but I wake up in the morning in a different position. So does that also involve thinking? Yes. You keep sensing in the body. And if you feel that, you know, the body is not comfortable, you change the position, change the posture. And you keep doing it the whole night. I mean, you can this experiment this, you know that you decide, you know, take any posture, sit in that posture and decide that you will not change the posture. Okay, come what may. And this is a very interesting experiment you can do. In fact, Vipassana, which is one of the uh, uh, system of meditation propounded by Buddha, you know, one of the concepts is this Adhisthan, you know, that you decide that, okay, I will not change this posture for next one hour. So very interesting experiment. You know. If you do that, you will find that in the beginning, there is so much of pain, particularly in your joints. You know. and, and you want to uh, change the posture. But if you are firm, then you don't change the posture. And there is a lot of activity taking place in the body and this pain will become intense and after some time it will just melt and then it will evaporate. So all this will keep happening in the body and you can be an observer. So your decision is involved when changing the posture of the body, your decision is involved. But because we are not aware of these things, we are not observing these things, right? We are not able to see and understand them. So now try doing this simple, simple experiment, but very useful experiment. In fact, science has kept this self, this consciousness out of its course or out of a subject of study. And therefore, you are not able to study many things. Now you include it as a subject of study, this consciousness, this self, and then do the study and you will see, you know, you will get many revealing, you know, experiences. And you will be able to understand human being much better than what we are doing now. This had to do with activities of the self. Uh, similarly, when we are talking about uh, the, the body, the body needs being temporary like food. But if I look at, uh, say, air, water, these things are needed by the body continuously. I constantly need air. Without that, I will die. So uh, how can we say that they are not continuous, the needs of the body? See, this is what I'm saying that, you know, it, it, it will, you know, we have to start observing this you know, uh, self, the activity of the self, the activity of the body, and then we have to start observing this interaction between the self and the body. You know, so a lot of this work has to be done before we can really, you know, respond to these uh, questions. A okay. lot of exploration is required. Because when you are observing and seeing things for yourself, then you will also be able to, you know, understand what I am trying to, you know, say. Otherwise, my response will not make much sense. So, uh, this small experiment that I am mentioning, you know, we have to uh, start working on them. And there is a series of them. You know, which we will uh, keep uh, talking about and, uh, and discussing as we go along.
but I can give some answers which uh, uh, can be of uh, use for you. Uh, so uh, I'll do that. <coughs> But, but, you know, I would always suggest that, you know, we have to go through these small, small experiments and that will develop our capacity. Then we can address to this, you know, questions which are involving series of these small observations. So what we are saying is that needs and activities of the body are temporary. Now, this is something we have to observe, you know, observe about all the activities, you know, of the body and we have to take them one by one and see. So, for example, we breathe in and we breathe out, right? So, both this breathing in and breathing out are temporary. But if you take, put them together, they seem to be continuous. So you breathe in and take a lot of oxygen for the body, okay. But then you can't go on breathing in, you know. Once that oxygen is consumed by the body and it is converted into the oxygen, uh, into part of carbon dioxide, it has to be breathed out. So if you say breathing is continuous, yes, it looks continuous, right. But if you look at this process of breathing, <coughs> it consists of two process, you know, breathing in and breathing out. Now this breathing in is not continuous. This breathing out is not continuous that we can see. But if we put these two together, breathing in and breathing out, they seem to be continuous. So all this, you know, investigation has to be done. Right. And then there will be issue like this, you know, which we have to study is that if you look at the body as a whole, the whole body is changing, changing with time, right? The cells in the body, which constitute the body, right? The cells are dying, you know, and new cells are being formed, right? So the whole cells are changing, you know. It is said that in 12 years, almost all the cells of the body are replaced by new cells. Mm -hmm. So the body itself is changing, is temporary. And therefore, any activity of it is going to be temporary. But all these are the answers which we have to slowly you know, start looking into ourselves and observe and verify. And many times we'll have to develop that subtlety. Like most of us are not even able to observe our breathing. Very interesting. Like when you get angry, observe what is happening to your breathing. Your breathing pace will become abnormal. Right. Now keep observing your breathing. And you will find that after a while, this breathing will become normal. Right? Mm. And when the breathing becomes normal, your mind also becomes pacified. So your, your anger goes away. Now observe your breathing, keep it normal and try to get angry. So very interesting experiments you know, we can do. So we see how the mind works, the self works, how the body works, how the, they are interacting. Right? Mm -hmm. And if you start observing breathing, start observing this breath without you know reacting and just observing, the breathing will become normal. And then it will slowly start becoming subtle, you know, subtler and subtler. So that breathing which you were able to feel, suddenly you find that it has become so subtle that you are not able to observe it. But then you keep observing and you can observe that subtle breath and in the process your capacity to observe has become more subtle. 
so you have developed this ability of observation now all these things you can experiment and see and as you experiment and see you develop your capacity to observe you become it becomes more and more subtle right and it can see finer and finer things but that all takes time Mm, it will need some exploration, I think. Yes. Explo exploration and at the base of that exploration, it will need that observation, you know. And that observation capacity we have to develop slowly. Mm. Yes. But interesting thing is that all this capacity is there in the self. When self starts observing things, it is able to observe, it is able to see. When it continues to observe without getting, you know, without reacting to the situation, then it is, you know, its capacity to see subtler things, it starts developing. That capacity is already there, we are not even making use of it. So then our subtlety of observation will increase. So we can see more subtle things. We can see, when we can see subtle things, you know, subtler things, then we can see them, you know, in a much finer manner than we can see. So the fineness of our observation will also increase. So like that. You know. mm. Um, regarding the self, you mentioned that um, the um, needs of the self, they are quantitative, uh, qualitative. But uh, um, we do say, like, for example, for respect, that um, so-and-so gave me less respect on some, at some time. So um, can we also say that um, this is quantitative? Yeah, see, this, I mean, what I'm saying is that we, I mean, the way we observe things today, we mix up too many things together. And when you mix up too many, too many things, right, you are not able to, you know, kind of uh, understand it properly. And we are likely to uh, kind of misinterpret. So look at this phenomena, you know, somebody paying respect to me. Okay. Now there are two aspects. One is this feeling of respect. The other is the expression of this feeling of respect. Now, are they the same thing? Or they are two different things? Of course, they are related. But they are two different things, you know, and they are related together. Okay. So we can see I have a feeling of respect in me for you. And now I want to express that feeling of respect. So in order to express this feeling of respect, which is there in me for you, I may have a different ways of expressing it. So I can, you know, if you are elder to me, I can touch your feet. Now this touching the feet is an expression of my feeling of respect right, for you. Mm. If you are my friend, I say Namaste or I shake my hands with you. This is another expression of this feeling of respect for the friend. And if you are a child, you know, I will give blessings. So that is at another expression of feeling of respect. Now, if we are clear about this feeling and the expression, and this capacity we have to have, you know, now we can ask this question that when I am talking about less or more respect, am I talking about the feeling of respect or 
am I talking about the expression of this feeling of respect? What is it that I am eva evaluating? We evaluate based on what we see. Yes. And what we see, you know, this seeing is very limited. That is the question. So what we see is there in a very gross physical form. So this subtle feeling that is there at the base of this expression, we are not able to see. Because we are not, we have not developed that capacity. We have not developed the capacity to see the feeling in the self, which is the basis of this expression. So now if you take this example that, you know, you go to a uh, program and somebody is offered a flower and you are not, a, uh, you are not offered a flower for the expression of the feeling of respect. Right. Now, what you are evaluating is this offering of the flower, not the feeling of respect. But I will feel disrespected. Yes, because you are not, you know, kind of evaluating the feeling directly. You don't have that subtlety to observe. So you think that somebody who is offered with a flower or a bigger flower than you is given more respect. <laughs> Yes. Now you can see that, you know, this flower is an expression of the feeling of respect. It, when it comes to respect, I mean, this, when it comes to flower, it can be a big, for bigger flower than you, you know, offered to you. Or maybe you are not offered the flower at all. So now you will feel that you are respected less than the other. But if you look at the feeling directly, you can see that either somebody has a feeling of respect for you or he does not have that feeling of respect for you. There is nothing in between. But we are not able to see this. Mm. In fact, interestingly, you'll find that nowadays, you know, most of these programs that we have, right, these people who are offering flower, big flower or a small flower, they have, don't have feeling of respect at all. You know, they are just doing it as a ritual. So even if they are offering a very big bouquet, you know, hardly there is feeling of respect there, you know, with it. They are doing it because they have some work to be done, to get done from you. <laughs> so they call me, you know, people big in the sense that they have some power, you know. And then they will arrange for such big bouquets and all that. But they don't have feeling of respect. You know, and these people know. They know that they have been called because some work they want to get done. Right? So they don't feel respected deep inside. They know that this is a reason. So they don't feel respected. And all these bouquets are going waste. Because the very purpose is not served. On the one hand, these people do not have this feeling of respect. On the other hand, the other person also, you know, somewhere had this in mind that these people are trying to make a fool of me. You know. So he does not feel respected. And all this bouquet flower goes west. At least it is not able to convey the meaning because that meaning is not there. That feeling is not there. So, <clears throat> we have to see this, you know, that when we are saying less respect, what does it mean? Does it mean that I am evaluating the feeling of respect or I am evaluating the expression of the feeling of respect? Mm -hmm. If you are evaluating the feeling of expression of the feeling of respect, there can be more or less. Mm -hmm. But if you are evaluating the feeling, you will find that either this feeling is there or not there. You know? And that's it. Mm. Yeah.